Welcome back for episode 32 of the Young Shakespeare Podcast. Today I'm joined by Boston University women's basketball player, Riley Childs. Riley, thanks for coming on. Thanks, thank you for having me. Uh, I forgot to tell you about the handshake. Sorry. I always shake the hand. I think it's classy. Yes. Um, Riley is a Boston University women's basketball player. She has led the team the past two seasons in rebounds, and she's gotten some great points and minutes and other stats like steals. She was the TVL MVP in both basketball and volleyball her senior year, and she's won a boatload of TVL All-Star and Metro West All-Star and uh, Globe Scholastic Awards, so it is an honor to have her on. What makes you so good at basketball? Um, I think, like, I started playing when I was five, and my dad has always pushed me, like, made me super competitive, so I just think, like, the want to get better yes. was always like something I had when I was super little and then like just playing and I started AU um, god like in like fifth grade uh-huh. so it's been a long time like I have played for yeah. m- most of my life what's like your advice for someone watching that's like I want to go D1 in basketball um, I would say that a lot of it comes from like hard work and the extra hours and stuff and like you can't get upset when things don't go your way like you have to keep fighting and I mean you also can't compare yourself to other people like comparison is actually the worst like thing to do to yourself like especially mm-hmm. like seeing other people get offers and you're like why am I not getting this why am I not getting that like blah 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 yeah but for me like I realized that way too early and then I was like all right I just gotta put my head down and keep going yeah so there was a period of time when you weren't maybe getting the recognition from schools that you wanted yeah like it's always upsetting when you see people you've played with like your whole life and then I guess not upsetting, but, like, frustrating almost. Right. And, like, Naturally. you're going on vi- – like, I was going on visits and going to schools and stuff. And, like, it was always, well, we want to see you keep playing. Like, we'll keep in touch, whatever. And then, uh, like, yeah. you would see people that you know, like, get offers. And then you compare yourself to them. And then all this stuff happens. But I was pretty um, lucky that I got the BU offer when I was a junior. Mm-hmm. And I committed in November my junior year. So I was set for – like a year before yeah. I actually like signed anything. Why be you? I love the balance of school and basketball. It's one of the best schools in the country. And yeah. I knew coming in I was going to play. And that's something I had wanted to just because I know myself. Like I wouldn't have been comfortable going somewhere and just sitting yeah. on the bench. Like I wanted to contribute and I wanted to make a difference. Right. And I love, I'm super close to my parents and like I love the fact that they come to literally every single game that they can and it's like so, it's 45 minutes, it's so close, like it's not bad at all. And it's funny because when I was younger, I was always like, oh, I don't want to go in the city, like I want to go to a campus, (laughs) like I want like a campus life and then every school that I looked at that had a campus, I was like, I don't like this, like I don't want it. And then like just being in Boston is like the coolest thing because... Like, from being from Medway, like, you're close to the city, but you're not... Ev- like, I would never go into the city. Yeah. Like I don't... There are be, like, a special occasion Exactly, or exactly. And you would only go for, like, a day or, like, a dinner or something. Yes, yes. So, like, just getting to live in the city and, like, the buildings that I get to live in. Like, I would never live in an apartment as nice as I get to live in right now. Wow. But it's literally because I play basketball, so... That's crazy. Yeah. Did you know BU, I read this somewhere, is the hardest place to get an A in the whole country? It feels like it. <laughs> it definitely feels like yeah, it. Yeah, Jet told me that, and then he said that he maybe would have reconsidered if he had known that before committing. Yeah. yeah. No, it's that, definitely hard. But you guys have a lot of, like, almost semi-celebrity professors, almost. Yeah. Like, it's Ibram crazy. Kendi. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, I literally, like, you would never know that, I guess. I mean, they probably, had, they, like, advertise it, I guess, so you wouldn't know it. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I had no idea, and then, like in some of my classes like I've never had like anyone like crazy I'm in the Mm. comm school so it's like it's a great school and like there are some great professors there obviously but like and like especially the question business school like just like there's so many like wicked smart people at at BU and obviously there is but it's just like every day you're like wow (laughs) yeah I'm here yeah (laughs) do you ever do you ever um actually no that's not really a great question let me think of another question um you we're en route to a Patriot League title, and then COVID happened. Yeah. Tell people what that was like. So, sophomore year, um, we won the... Well, it was the first time we got... Well, not the first time. We hosted my freshman year. We hosted the quarterfinals. We lost in the quarterfinals, which was devastating. But then um, we came back 
we were ranked like preseason, I think fourth or something, and then we won the quarterfinal game, hosted again, and then yeah. we were hosting for the first time, and the first time the schools ever made it to the semifinals. Uh-huh. So we were hosting, and the night before, the boys, our men's team had won the men's side championship Mm. and like we had all watched the game together and it was like such an exciting time like we were so excited for them we were so excited for us like to come back and win and then the next day happened and obviously you read stuff about like other schools and like covid's like more real than we anyone wanted it to be Mm -hmm. but we thought that we were going to get to at least finish up the tournament like that's what we were told that's what we thought was going to happen because it was like a thursday i'm pretty sure and then so thursday was the semis and then the championship was supposed to be on sunday Mm -hmm. And Thursday morning we get up, we have team breakfast like in this place on campus. We're all like blasting music in there, like having a great time. Mm -hmm. And then we did this like team activity, which was so random that we did it that day, but it was just like something our coaches used to do. And it was like, we were reflecting on our favorite moments of the season. Like just like a cute thing to do. Yes, yes. And then we had shoot around, which is like an hour of just like getting shots up, going through the scout, whatever. And like 10 minutes into shoot around, like our coaches huddle us up and they were like, okay, so we have bad news, like COVID, like it's canceled. Yikes. And for a second, I thought she was joking. Like I was like, oh, like, ha, ha, let's go practice. <laughs> it's another team memory. <laughs> Literally, I was like, this is hilarious. What's going on? And then like, um, as soon as I like realized that it wasn't a joke, I just like started crying. Like it was just really? like the worst. It was the worst because you get so, it's like you're you train all season for it and like you bust yeah. your ass to like get to that point and then it just gets taken away and there's literally nothing we could do about it like we didn't even get to play right and winning the patriot league tournament gets you into the ncaa yeah. tournament, right so is that that's probably a huge goal for the team yeah that would what be seed awesome. what seed do you think you'd typically get if you win patriot league uh like a highest would be like a 14 okay yeah like i think the we ended up losing this year in the finals and i think lehigh was like a 14 seed. okay yeah but that's even like March Madness, like you can win a game, right? Yeah, you exactly. get to play like this crazy, crazy competition. And what was the quarantine period like for you? Um, really frustrating. I mean, like there wasn't much you could do. And like we, I was lucky enough that like my family got like a, like we had weights and we had like a Peloton mm-hmm. bike and stuff. So I was oh, able yeah. to like I got a friend out. you on Peloton. Yeah. Start start comparing workouts and stuff. Yeah. Do you exactly. want athletes? <laughs> exactly. See if I can keep up. And um but like just doing that was like good. But obviously yeah. like you miss you miss your friends, you miss like school, you miss the t- like I miss the team. And I think also like it was such a bitter taste like going home and not getting to play because it was just like this feeling yeah. of like emptiness unfinished because... business almost exactly and like when you lose like it's frustrating obviously did they send you home too right away after yeah that? like I went home that day like we were were the regular BU students had they already been sent home it was spring break oh so okay. we didn't we never really get a spring break because of the tournament anyway so like no one was on campus except for the athletes at that point. Like, it was us and then the spring athletes because they were just starting. Mm-hmm. All the NARPs left. Yeah, so they were they had all gone home for spring break. So then at first it was like that, oh, okay, we're just going to extend spring break for, like, two weeks. But then our coaches were like, you need to bring home more stuff than just for, like, two weeks. Like, plan for being home for a while because, like, obviously people have oh, to get yeah. flights and everything. So... I don't know, like we, and then we did a lot of team meetings on Zoom, and then like just like trying to work out with each other on Zoom yeah. was frustrating. But I mean, I think once like I got into the flow of being at home, it was nice because like I never, since I had gone to school my freshman summer, like I had never been home that long because we're at mm-hmm. school half the summer, like yeah. usually. So it's like it was nice to be home though. And like spend time with my family. Yeah, right. Because what? Yeah, once you get past a certain age, it's you're never gonna have one of those exactly. long extended periods. One interesting thing you told me before is so how tall are you? Uh, like six foot. Okay, and how tall is your mom? My mom's five one. That's crazy. Yeah. That's absolutely nuts. How do you think that happened? I don't know. Like thank <laughs> God, my dad is six four. Like yeah. he's very tall. So like thank God. But like obviously I love my mom. But we like look so similar too. Like mm-hmm. we have like very similar faces. But like she's just tiny. Wow. Yeah. Okay. What position do you play? I'm like a small forward. It's like okay. A four. Yeah, four. Okay. Yeah, maybe you would have had to be a guard or something. Yeah. If you... Well, I got recruited and I thought I was going to be a guard. Like, that oh, was really? what, yeah. Like, because in, in college, like, especially at the D1 level, like, everybody's tall. 
So, like, you go in and you're like, okay, like, you're going to be, like, more of a guard at school. And then, like, I got there my freshman year and, like, we didn't have height at all. So, like, uh. I had to play the four. And, like, as a freshman, I was like, put me wherever. I'm, I'll am i play. Like, mm-hmm. wherever you need me to go, like, I'll go, whatever. So then, like, I ended up, like, finding, like, my my spot in the four. And, like, yeah. I, I like it a lot more now. Or, I I or a lot of your defensive matchups, you have to cover taller girls. Yeah, that's rough. Who's the Who's the tallest girl you've covered, oh height wise? Oh gosh, um, probably like six three, six four. So that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's no, hard. it's definitely not easy. How What kind of like technique would you use to guard a larger opponent? Um, I don't know. Like it depends person to person, obviously, because we had some people in our league who were really tall and then like would shoot. So, like, from the outside, like, and they mm. wouldn't even really try and post up yeah. that much. But, like, a lot of times, like, I would just try and, like, jump back and forth so they could never get, like, a clear spot on the post uh, up. Yeah. But, like, now I have a teammate who's, like, 6'4", so mm-hmm. I don't really have to, like, I have uh, okay, a little bit yeah. of help back there. Is too. she at the 5? Yeah. Okay. And your your big thing is you rebound. Yeah. Two, t- two years in a row, you're the leading rebounder for the Terriers. Like, what makes you good at rebounding? What's your technique? What's that all about? I don't even know if it's, like, there's not really a technique, I guess. It's more, like, just, e- like, effort. Like, that's, rebounding is, like, one of the hardest things, and it's also one of the easiest things because you, like, can't practice it, really. Like, obviously, you can practice boxing out, and, like, you have to actually do that mm-hmm. to get rebounds, but, like, you just have to, like, want the ball more than, like, everybody yeah. else. And, yeah. like, that was something, too, like... We have a new coach now, but, like, our old coach, like, my first three years at school, like, um, that was one thing her and I had always talked about. Like, I'd always been a good rebounder in high school, but, like, high school's different because, like, I was bigger than everybody, so it was, like, a lot easier in high school. But, like, that was one thing, too. She was like, if you can rebound for me, you'll stay on the floor. So that was just, like, I was trying to just get as much as I could. And then I've, like, I guess I got better at, like, I've gotten better at it over time, and there's, like, little tricks you can pick up, like, Mm -hmm. reading the ball when someone shoots it. Instead of, like, staring at the rim, like, I, like, try and watch <laughs> yeah, the shooter, right. like, to kind of judge it, but I like rebounding, though. Yeah. You dropped 41 on Halston and 21 yeah. rebounds? Yeah. Does that sound right? Okay. What was that game like? That sounds absolutely nuts. It was it was crazy. I didn't even realize, like, it was that much either, like, during, in mm-hmm. the game, but, like, it was at Holliston, um, and we were, it was, like, a home, or an away and away, because we were at Holliston. So the boys were like after us. So it was like kind of cool because no one ever came to our games. Yeah. But there was like people filling in from like to get there early for the boys game, whatever. So like, I don't know. Like I just remember like I've literally never shot better in my life. Like I yeah. made so many, like I made a bunch of threes that like I was just like feeling great. <laughs> but and we didn't even win by that much. Like it was one of those games where I like I had to score. So, Mm -hmm. for us to, like, do well, and then after the game was over, like, I I don't even remember. So, was the game close? Yeah, I think we went by, like, 10, but it was, like, kind of close. okay, yeah. So, um, I just remember after the game, like, my coach being like, you kind of went off, and I was like, oh, really? And then, like, I was in the interview, like, after the game, and he, like, told me the stat line, and I was was like, oh, my God, I had no idea. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and then now, um, what do you average about for points? I think I'm at, like... Eight, like an okay. eight and eight. Yeah, and do you start? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, now is so yeah, like you mentioned, there wasn't probably great crowds for your for your yeah. games in high school. Are there decent crowds now? Do you get to play in front of people at Case Gym? Is um, it Case Gym or is it the roof? Kate, well, it's like Case Gym is the roof is what mm, they call, it, but okay. it's Case. Like that's what everyone pretty much calls it. Okay, Case. Um, not really. Like. Hmm. Obviously, like, a bunch of parents go, so it's, like, it's nice because we have, I think, like, four or five local girls, like, Massachusetts people on our team. Oh, okay. And then, um, or, like, in surrounding areas, like, New Jersey, um, Maine, like, so it's close enough. So they can make it, yeah. Yeah, and, like, that's nice when you have your parents there. And then, like, it's great when, like, local, like, teams come. Like, sometimes, like, local middle school teams will come to games and everything. Oh, cool. Yeah, and it'll be awesome to, like, see them because they get, like, so into the games and everything. Right. Like, they get so excited, so that makes it, like, better. And then we have, like, theme nights. Like, we have, like, an ASL night, mm-hmm. um, like, things like that, like a kid's game. So then those games are, like, Oh, like, at halftime and stuff? Yeah, like, 
So that's always more like that makes it more fun. And then um, I gotta imagine like the Patriot League tournament, people start coming out. You would help, like you would think. Oh, I mean, okay. the, the boys def the men's team definitely gets like a lot of fans. Like they have a decent crowd. But then the same thing with like the Patriot League tournament. It's just tough because it's, oh, it's like spring it's break. spring break, so no one's there. So wow. it's like yeah, it's like kind of empty. But we have literally one of the best bands ever, and they like fill the they're so loud it doesn't even feel like. Oh, yeah. The gym's, like, that empty. And then, like, we'll do, like, us and, and our men's team, we do a pretty good job of supporting each other. Like, we'll mm-hmm. go and watch, um, especially in, like, non-conference, so, like, beginning of the season games, because when we're in conference, like, when we're playing, like, at Holy Cross, their home versus Holy Cross, like, at the same time. Mm-hmm. So you can't, like, really go to each other's games then. But, mm-hmm. like, we do a good job of supporting each other, like, in yeah. non-conference. Is there a lot of... Um like, I know a lot of college teams, the dynamic is it's not just on the court. Like, do you eat dinner with your teammates and, like, hang out with them and stuff like that? Yeah, it's definitely, like, a constant. You're all, I'm always with one of my teammates, like, literally 24-7. Like, we live with each other. We obviously practice with each other. Like, people have class. We'll eat with each other. Like, and um, in the summer right now, too, like on campus like we're all on the same floor in the building that we're living in so it's just nice like we just go back and forth to each other's rooms but it's basically like one big sorority Mm. yeah is what it feels like yeah do you have to come in during the summer for practice and training and stuff yeah we're there we have so there's two summer sessions our whole team goes for summer two usually we couldn't go last year obviously because of covid but um it's like all it's like all of July and then the first two weeks of August. So I'm like right in wow. the center of it. Right that sounds now. like yeah. the whole summer. Yeah. It's, Six weeks. It's a long time. Summer too. That's just the yeah, that's just the summer. That's yeah. crazy. But I like it. It's honestly probably my favorite time to be on campus. Oh really? Is it because it's like quieter and it's just with your teammates or Yeah, like it's <clears throat> it's nice because we get to actually like do stuff and explore. Like when we're when school rolls around and like the season rolls around like there's very limited free time oh so like summer sessions nice because it's really only our team like the men's team's there too so it's like we're all just there in like this one building hang out and like you have one class that you take like twice a week and like class is obviously class so that's like not fun but i mean like it's easier than like a full course load and then like practices like are a little bit more relaxed than they would be in the season so it just like makes it like yeah better. by explore do you mean like going to boston and yeah. just do stuff okay what's what's a memorable boston trip that you have oh gosh um last year my two of my teammates and i we just like walked to like every museum like possible and we just like went into the museums and stuff and like just like went to like a farmer's market i'm pretty sure like just like little things like that like going into faneuil hall and like just doing fun stuff like that like we go to the beach a lot in the summer like we'll go to like revere Mm -hmm. beach or like southie beach which is like not a real beach if you like actually think of like beaches but like it's just cool to be able to like do like see different sides of the city because like you can get really stuck on Com Ave, like on campus. Yeah. So it's nice to like get off of that our street. Do you like raising canes? See, I like I. It's okay. <laughs> it's, I, I, wow. like, I don't love. I you're, don't get you're, the hype. You're offending a lot of viewers right now. I know. I mean, I I, I eat it. I definitely eat it. My yeah. I have um one of my pretty close friends. It's they call canes Thursday, and we go <laughs> on Thursdays for mm. dinner. Yeah, we're um beyond basketball. What's your favorite BU sport to attend? Um, besides watching, I guess, the men's team, I'd probably say, like, women's soccer. Because, mm-hmm. like, that's um where all of my, like, closer friends outside of, like, oh. the basketball world are on that team. So I really love going to their games. And um, it's right on that Nickerson field, which is, like, the one that, yeah. that you drive by. So that's always, um, those games are always fun. They're pretty good, too, so. Yeah. Do you wish for you at football? Yeah. It would be cool. I mean, it's funny too though, cause like BU hockey is absolutely massive. Yes. So like, at schools like where football is like the big like sport, like hockey's our big sport. Mm-hmm. So it's like funny cause people treat hockey games like a football game, but it would, it would be cool to have a football team. Yeah, right. Um, There's no space. Yeah, they probably got cut for a reason too. Yeah, I don't think they were. Very <laughs> I, yeah, I don't think they're amazing. Yeah. They probably would have stuck around. Um, this is my favorite question to ask. What's the biggest 
misconception about Riley Childs? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people think I'm a lot meaner than I am. Hmm. Because, especially, like, through high school, I feel like that was a big thing. Like, in sports, like, I just, I want to win. Yeah. So sometimes that comes off a little aggressive. Yeah. And I feel like I look meaner playing than I actually am. Like, I, I... I want to win, and if, like, I have to do stuff to do stuff, I will do it, but I, like, I definitely think that that's, like, something that I'm, like, a hard ass. Yeah. Which that, I can be, but... Mm-hmm. Then that's sort of that's sort of interesting, the parallel with the athletes, because I had Spencer Cassell on from Harvard Football, and he's 6'6", 285, and he yeah. was, like, the biggest misconception about him, he said, was he looks like a big, mean dude, but he's yeah. like, I'm so nice if you get to know me. And I think you've been very nice. You've come to my house and been a lovely guest. Um, but I find I find that interesting. And do you think do you think at all that um, maybe being a female that isn't received as well your competitiveness or your like toughness or your will to win? Yeah, I definitely think so. I think it's like I don't think it's necessarily taken that way with other females, especially at like the D one level, mm-hmm. like because pretty much everyone there wants to win. I mean, there can be times, but like I think like even going back in high school like people would just be like why does she care so much and like we get so like offended that like and would take it so personally which like it was it's never per like what when i would get upset or like when i would get like into something like it would never be a personal thing like it would always be like i just want to win and like i catch myself sometimes getting really competitive at stupid things in like life which is so dumb but like uh, and then, like, I have to, like, reel it in and be like, okay, okay, it actually doesn't matter. I'm like, we need yeah. to relax a little. But what gets you competitive? At, like, any any activity where there's, like, a winner. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, ping pong, whatever yeah, you Yeah, like, stupid stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just, like, I, I hate to lose. Yeah. Do you ever, do you ever play pickup basketball with just, like, your hometown friends or anything like that? No, because... My friends from home, like, none of them played basketball. Oh, yeah. Which was, like, the nice thing, too, about, like, my my group of friends is that, like, it was a separate world. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like a lot of people in high school, when they're friends with people that they play sports with, like, it can get, like, weird when, like, someone, if someone doesn't play or whatever, yeah. like, things like that. But for me, like, my best friend is a soccer player. Like, she plays at Sacred Heart. And, like, Mm -hmm. so, like, her, like, she knows nothing about basketball. And, Mm -hmm. like, I played soccer, but I hated it. Like, so it's, like, two separate worlds. And, like, it was never, like, a competition thing. Because I feel like that also happens, too, in, like, girls' sports. Like, it's always a competition. Like, obviously, it's a competition. But then, like, Mm -hmm. once someone takes it a little too far, then it's like, oh, well, I hate this person now. Like, it it would, like, be taken to that, which is, I feel like, with guys, like, you would, like, get competitive on, like, the court or the field or something. And then afterwards, it's like, oh, whatever. Yeah. But that, like, doesn't happen in female sports. Okay. So you think that there's, it gets, on a personal level, people start to maybe feel opposed to each other why why do you think that is i just think it's the way girls work like i think that people take stuff really personally sometimes Mm -hmm. and i think also like at like the younger ages like when there are people like at like a medway high school where you're playing a sport because you've played your whole life not because Mm -hmm. you actually like the sport Uh, like in in high school when it gets to that point so i just feel like that and it just gets like i don't know Mm -hmm. girls are petty yeah. So then, like, mm-hmm. one thing happens, and it's, like, it spirals. Wow. Dang. That's, yeah, that's rough. I I think that is a big thing that I've noticed with, like, <clears throat> I think I was talking to my friend Orrin the other day, and we talked about this huge fight we had, and we were, like, screaming at each other, and, like, like close to, like, fighting, mm-hmm. and then, like, two days later, we were, like, you know, oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's all good, bro. Like, sometimes that can happen. Yeah. Have, like weird yeah like guys can weirdly put those things aside yeah but yeah but that's just the experience that i um know about uh you were a stud at volleyball too what position were you in volleyball i started as a setter my freshman year Mm -hmm. and i had played i played like my eighth grade year for like medway middle school but that was like not really a thing Mm -hmm. And then my summer going into high school, they were like, oh, you have bigger hands. Like, why don't you be a setter? (laughs) I was like, okay. And then I made varsity. I don't know how I made varsity my freshman year, but I was like, I'm not complaining. Wow. I never played. Like, I literally didn't see the floor. I think I maybe played once. 
And then after that, like I did camps at Stonehill. Mm -hmm. And every year I would go do their volleyball camp because it was like one week and it was like I never touched volleyball outside the season except for that camp just to like get my skills back before like tryouts. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I want to hit. Like I don't like setting. Like it's not fun. Like I'm not playing. I want to hit. And then I was a right side because that's like the next thing to a setter. And then I was an outside hitter um, the end of my sophomore year. I became an outside. And then I I loved it. And then it was just like it just like flowed. And then I just caught kept getting better what are the parallels between basketball and volleyball um i feel like really the only one is like the hand-eye coordination like i feel like Mm -hmm. i and like i guess for basketball like you have to like be stronger so like i feel like i was able to channel like my strength into hitting Mm -hmm. in volleyball but like other than that like volleyball was just a nice change of pace like it's just like a different level of of competitive like aggression i guess like Mm. there's the net there like you don't have to like touch your opponent Mm -hmm. ever yeah you mentioned beforehand that you used to not like being tall yeah okay what was that like growing up and being oh my god i'm tall and then learning to embrace it yeah like when you're lit like i was i was wicked tall like when i was in like kindergarten like taller than everybody and then everyone caught up and then like i sprouted again in high school like my Mm -hmm. freshman year I think I was like 5'5", five, five, and then my sophomore year I was 5'10". Like, I grew a ton mm-hmm. in like a year. And I didn't like it because all my friends were so short, and I was like, I look like a freak. Like, I just stand out. But then, like, I don't know, like, I got older, and I was like, no, like, I like being tall. Like, it, it helps with, and it helps so much with sports. Like, I don't, yeah. if I wasn't this tall, like, I I don't know what I would be doing. Like, I yeah. probably would just be a regular student. And, like, now I'm just like, yeah, I'm tall. Like, yeah. I like it. Yeah, it's a part of you, and it's... You're an athlete and stuff like that. Yeah, that's and I think that's interesting that a lot of times that's another thing like girls would maybe struggle with versus boys would want to be yeah. taller in general. Um, and then you were pretty good at track too. You were second at TVLs in the discus and the shot put your junior year, but then you did not compete your senior year. Yeah. What was track like for you? Track was my freshman year was a third sport because then I was obsessed the fact that I had made varsity for volleyball and basketball I was like all right well now I need to do like I need to do like <laughs> the, the four-year three sport varsity yeah and so I was like well I'm not good at lacrosse I'm not good at softball I was like track is the next best mm-hmm. thing so I was like all right I'll do it like whatever so then I was doing the hurdles and I was absolutely terrible at them. And it was really? like, yeah, I was just, cause I was so nervous I was going to hit him. So I would like jump over it. Like, okay. You know, yeah. Go, like, you got to go right, right through. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was never me. So I was not good at those. And then I tried jumping cause I was like, oh, I'm lanky. So like, hopefully that would work. And it was <laughs> never like good. And then I think my freshman year I tried the discus and I just like was good at it. Like, it yeah. was just like. It was easier, like, than every other event. And then I was like, all right, if I'm going to do track, I'm just going to throw. And then I, like, tried the javelin, and I didn't like it. And then so I would just – I then I, like, picked up the shot put, and I was like, all right, this isn't bad. And then I did it for the th- those three years. And then my senior year, I was kind of, like, over it. And I was really upset that my – I was disappointed in myself my junior year that I didn't break the school record in the discus because I wanted to so badly. What was the record? It was like 120, and I was 118 was my furthest throw. And I would beat it all the time at practice, which is what stunk because I was like, all right, I'm like, I just would get so psyched out for meets. Yeah. And then I would, and then like what I went, I forget what I placed at states. I think I got third or something. So then I qualified for all state and then I absolutely choked at all state. And I was like, I can't ever do this again. Wow. Yeah. That was it. I was like, I'm done. That's crazy. You were super legit at discus. 118. That's like wicked good. Um, Did you throw from a stand or a glide or a spin in the shot put or a shuffle? Oh gosh. I think I did a, a shuffle. Okay. Yeah. I think I did the shuffle. Yeah. I, so I, for people that don't know, I coached track at DS in the winter and the spring this year because somehow with COVID it worked out with my school. And that's a big thing is like athletes making the jump from like a standing throw to then the shuffle is more comfortable, but then that gets too easy. Mm. Like that's just easy because they like know it and it's not that hard. But the glide is like the second best technique. And then the spin, I usually don't try to teach people that because it takes forever like you need to have an athlete for a good two years and be a good coach 
and have someone that's committed to learning it to make the spin work. But like, I don't know if you keep up with track at all. Like Ryan Krauser, he spins and he just broke the world record. Oh, okay. So you threw an eight pound shot. Yeah. You remember that? Okay. Ryan Krauser throws a 16 pound shot because he's a professional male. Mm. He threw it 76 feet. Can you believe that? No. Yeah. He's wow. a beast. That's yeah. unreal. And he comes from like a family of all these throwers. Like his his cousin Sam throws for the University of Oregon and his cousin Haley. And then his dad was an Olympian and his uncle. So they're just like all, they're all built on wow. the track. Yeah. He's like 6'7 and oh, just like geez. built like a lineman and like. But he's like super quick. Yeah. Like he does the spin, you know, that's how you throw. And then I had a kid on. Have you ever heard of Aiden Felty? He threw for Innovation Academy. I don't think so. Okay. If you'd done indoor, you probably would have seen him at Reggie. Oh, probably. Yeah. So this guy, he threw 67 feet. And he's a kid from, um, where is he from? Bill Ricca. He's wow. a beast. Yeah. And he's, but he's like my height and he's, he's like six foot. And he can do the rotational just like that. Yeah. That's crazy. Did you rotate in discus? Yes, I spun in discus. Okay. Is I, that hard to learn? Um, I think my freshman year was kind of hard to learn. But then once you get like, I don't know. And then once I had like the footwork down, it wasn't too bad. Obviously, then you have times where your spin is absolutely crazy. But yeah, you're I throwing mean, it in a net and stuff. Yeah, exactly. But I don't think like, I don't think that ever like was too bad of a... Like, I don't think I ever really struggled with that one. I mean, there were meets sometimes where I would, like, I would spin, you know, like, your first two throws, you spin, throw it out of bounds, you're like, well, Jesus, and then you would just stand and throw, like, yeah. I would do that. I think that happened to me a couple times, which was so frustrating, because obviously to spin, you throw it much, like, you're going to throw it farther than yeah. a standing, but. I'm trying to picture Medway High School. I can picture your circle, and I see, like, there's the grass run up for the javelin. Yeah. And then you guys have like a ropes course right nearby your yeah. business area. Yeah. Did you get to use that? Yeah. So that's like, um, it's called IPEC. So your sophomore year, that's your gym class. Like it's, okay. it's called IPEC. I, I don't know what it stands for. I probably should, but I mean, it, it was so long ago. But it was like, like le there were, it was cool. It was like ropes course stuff and like. Um, you did that two days in the week and then one day was health class so it was like all year long and then at the end of the year we had like a, a full day field trip hmm. to some indoor ropes course and it was just like climbing stuff and then we had this thing called IPEC day and it was like every class in the sophomore class like each gym class like was their own team and we all competed against each other in like all these different events and stuff wow yeah for like a whole day were you good with the heights and stuff like that? Yeah. Okay. That doesn't really freak me out. I don't know. Yeah. One of the things that your coach wrote about you, I think it was in Milford Daily News, was that your style of play was like really tenacious. You think that's true? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And you think that's sort of just in line with your competitiveness or like, yeah, where do you, where do you think that comes from maybe? I think it comes from the competitiveness, but then I also think it comes from like, I feel like I would do I the way I play is like I would just do anything for like my coach or the team like yeah. so I like whatever they need me to do like I'm going to do it so I just feel like that's kind of where it comes from but I feel like most of the tenaciousness comes from like yeah. the competitiveness cuz like I I've already told you but like I actually hate to lose so much so like at like even if it's in like a drill in practice so it's like I think that's just where it comes from so you you know through it all states and discus and you were a TVL MVP in volleyball. Did you get any offers or hear from college coaches in those sports? I got a couple letters for track. I think the like the most serious letter I got was from like Lafayette. Okay. Because sometimes you get letters. Yeah, like, I know, like, exactly. They come down to guidance, and then it's like yeah. some school. It's like Acorn, whatever. Yeah, exactly. What? And so like, I had like a of bunch of those. Gets too. Yeah. yeah, so I had like a bunch of those, but I think the only like serious one was like Lafayette, and then but like my coaches all knew, so they were like, "There's no point in like us reaching out to people <clears throat> because they knew that I just yeah. didn't to do it." Because I feel like yeah, one eighteen as a junior, because that's typically like people that don't know you. I mean, you don't. By the time senior year is over, you're usually going to a college already, so you can't use yeah. those marks. But I feel like 118 would definitely get you to some, like, yeah. at least D2s, if not, like, maybe D1 schools, yeah. weirdly. Did you ever think, like, hey, maybe I'll try to walk on to, like, the BU volleyball or, like, track team? That must have popped in your head, like, oh, I can be a two-sport college athlete. It popped into my head 
for volleyball, but BU doesn't have a volleyball team. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. But when I, so I, like I said, I committed super early, but I, after I committed, like got a couple, co- like my high school volleyball coach got a, a bunch of calls from schools and then kept trying to convince me, like, if I just quit basketball and focus on volleyball, like, I oh my go God. somewhere, like, elite. And I was like, no, like, I don't want to. Like, I've played basketball literally my entire life. Like, I could not yeah. throw it all away. And, like, I love basketball. So, like, I'm thankful that I didn't do that. But, like, there are days where I'm in, like, a hard workout. And I'm like, wow, I should have picked volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> like, there are days where I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't like the running in this anymore. Who, who reached out to your coach? Oh, gosh. I think um, Northeastern was one of the wow. schools that reached out because he had sent a couple people there from his club team. Um, and then, like, I did the Stonehill camp. And so, like, my senior year, my junior and senior year, the way they did it was, like, we, the first day you had, like, a tryout and you would get put on teams. And then, like, the teams, like, that was how you would go through the rest of camp. So there yeah. was, like, obviously different levels and stuff. So my junior and senior year, I was, like, on, like, the top level. And I only knew that because, like, I was with the kids that they were recruiting. Yeah. So, like, you could tell because the head coach was at, like, all the stuff that we did. And then, like, they would go play, like, pick up with the team, like, during wow. like, breaks and stuff. <laughs> yeah, which was so cool. It's called pick up as well in volleyball? I think so. <laughs> and then my senior year, like, going into my senior year, I played with them, like, once or twice. The Stonehill girls. And I was like, wow, this is intense like it was totally different than anything because like high school volleyball obviously is different than college but it was so cool and like I had like the I had talked to like their coach and I was like yeah like I'm committed for basketball but like this is so much fun like whatever but I never anything like serious yeah I thought about it though okay that's interesting um the one thing for me maybe you can explain because I'm not really I don't know a ton about volleyball so you play it's like six people right on the mm-hmm. court and then there's like beach volleyball that I'm seeing in the Olympics Shout out to the U.S. ladies who just beat the, the Chinese team. Um, what is the, like, how do people get into beach volleyball? That's what I always wonder. I'm like, did they start out playing it like a medway high on the yeah. six on six teams? I have no idea. I think, I think a lot of times, like, and I could be totally wrong because I'm not in that world, but I think a lot of the times when you play club volleyball, like, Volleyball is one of those sports, which I didn't know this until I started playing in high school, but, like, if you play club, like, you play all year round. Like, in basketball, it's all year round. Wow. But, like, volleyball was one of those things where, like, you literally would have no time to play another sport. Like, and I barely had time. Because you'd just be indoors. At a yeah, and, like, mm-hmm. I barely had time. Like, it was hard, like, definitely in high school balancing, like, like, I would have, you'd have school practice was at like 4 30 to 6 30 and then i would have au from like 7 to 9 or something like practices and stuff so that was definitely not easy to balance but like i don't know just it was it's like a cult like that's the best way i can describe like the the club volleyball world like everybody knows each other and like they all play on these teams and stuff so i think like beach volleyball like it's just something that you just like progress into and then it's like it's way harder yeah, because you got to run through the, the sand, sand yeah. and probably per person more space to cover, I yeah. imagine. Because it's less, what is, because some, sometimes is it, it's Is it a two. smaller, yeah, it's, it, well, it's two on the Olympics from yeah, what yeah, I've yeah. seen, but is it, do you know if it's a smaller area they're covering? I don't know. Or if I it's the no same. Idea. Okay. It looks this. it looks the same. Yeah. You ever want to coach sports? I actually do. That's what I want to, I, my goal after I'm done with basketball, if that's after my four years or if I take my COVID year and do a fifth year, I don't know yet what I want to do. Mm. I want to coach college. That's awesome. Yeah. So I've asked this question, like almost every athlete I think has come on. I've got a variety of answers. Some people said no, weirdly. A lot of biggest answer I get is people are like, yeah, I want to coach my kids. And then some people are like, yeah, I coach high school. You're the first person that, that's like the career path. Yeah. Wow. How do you, have you talked to your coach at BU and say hey what is your advice like what's the path forward to get a college coaching job so I've definitely talked to um both my I am kind of in a weird spot because my the coach that recruited me never ended up coaching me at BU she um that that staff got let go before I got to BU wow and then my freshman year was my head coach's first year and then she just left after my junior year wow. and she's now at Wisconsin mm. so and now I have a new head coach so I've had quite a few coaches in my four years <coughs> yes but um it's 
probably good because now you've seen a lot of different styles. Exactly, and like more connection. Like that's like the biggest mm, thing too. Good point too. Yeah. But like I've t- I talked to my old coach about it, and I've talked to like this new coach about it, and obviously like as the season goes on, like there's like more serious conversations that need to be had of like next steps. But I mean, I like I, it's I could not imagine like going to a normal job like after leaving sports and like I don't and I thought about like coaching high school but I was like I want to coach people who want to be there and I know that you're not always going to get that in high school yeah and I feel like the like the lifestyle of a coach is a hard lifestyle like the recruiting is not easy obviously and like it's a lot of hours but I couldn't imagine like doing anything else so like there's obviously like there's clinics and stuff that you can go to and get sent to and like there's so many connections and stuff, so like I'm just trying to like stay in that world as much yeah. as I can. That would that would be like the dream. That's super cool, and yeah, I see what you're saying. That sometimes in life, there's things like you're like, are, am I really just like, is this it? Would you yeah. really and basketball? And it seems like you've gotten a lot of different like tests where you've been like track and volleyball, and you're like, no, basketball yeah. is like my life. That's what I want to do. Do you know if it's being like a graduate assistant coach, like how, like what's the what's the step after college? Um, if you had to guess, I think a lot of times it's either a grad assistant or like a dobo. So the dobo is the director of basketball operations. Oh. So it's like they're not a coach, but they do like they're like like a head manager kind of like if that makes sense like they do all like the behind the scenes stuff like the scheduling the like scheduling hotels food like trips like all that kind of stuff like they Mm -hmm. just like help the staff so that's like kind of the next step but I think for I'm in like kind of a unique position because well a lot of athletes are because we get a fifth year of eligibility because of COVID yeah so the plan, my plan is I want to play my fifth year. Like, that would be ideal is to mm-hmm. play as long as I can without, like, playing professionally. Cause that's Does that mean you have to me. go to graduate school at BU or? Um, yeah, so I would get my master's in something. I don't I don't know. Right. I have to figure that out. And I could also take it somewhere else. Like, I don't really know yet what the what's, like, in the future. Um, but that's obviously, like, those are conversations that I'm starting to have with my coach and like starting to have with my family because that's obviously like a big decision like do I want what do I want to do whatever but I think then after that that's like then it's just like going to like seeing if I can just get an assistant job or Mm. like a dobo job or something like that that's crazy has it crossed your mind playing overseas or seeing if there's a shot at the WNBA um not the WNBA but I've thought I've like thought about playing overseas a little Mm. bit but I think I like I've talked to people who've played overseas and it just seems lonely. Like it's mm. like a very isolating like experience. Or something. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I would only want to play if it was like somewhere cool. And obviously that would yeah. be an unreal experience to get to go overseas and like play basketball. But mm. like I also don't think my body can like do it really? that long. Yeah. Like, are you, are you already old. feeling the signs of like <laughs> beating, getting beat up from year yeah. basketball? Yeah. What is that? Is it just soreness? Like, in general, or is it, like, injuries are coming easier? I have, um, like, soreness is obviously an issue with, like, everything, but I have, I actually have, um, compartment syndrome in my calf, so it's, like, they're just, like, inherently tight. Like, they're always tight. Oh, boy. And, like, the only way to, like, truly fix it is, like, with surgery, but I, like, the surgery isn't, like, guaranteed to work. It's, like, a weird thing. That's crazy. So, I actually get, like, Botox. I've gotten, like, Botox injections. No way. Yeah, to, like, try and slow down, like, the muscles. I had a Harvard football player on the other day, um, which will be out by the time this one is posted, and he said that he has, he had, like, a super serious knee surgery, and he yeah. got screws in his knees, but then he, like, points at the camera, and he goes, I'm not saying which knee it is yeah. for you Ivy League football teams listening, because he's, like, literally, he's, like, yeah, if they knew what knee was hurt, they could, like, target the yeah. knee or something. I was, like, that's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. But, yeah, so, like, that's, and obviously, like, basketball, like, a huge part of it is running, so, like, the fact that, like, it hurts to run sometimes sucks, but, like, I don't know, just I don't think my body is built to play. I've played literally my whole life, so that's like 20 years, 21 yeah. years almost. Dang. Um, and then is there a coach that you maybe look up to for inspiration, whether it's someone you've known personally or like a coach on, on television, like the UConn coach or something like that? Um, like, I, I don't know. I think 
my I think I've experienced a lot of different coaching styles so I feel like if anything like I don't look I don't think I would look up to like a certain coach I think it looking at people's progression in their lives and like and following certain people and how they bounce from school to school I think that that's super cool and like getting to explore the world yeah but I think for like people that have coached me that I've looked up to like this is gonna sound so corny but like my dad has always been like my favorite coach that I've ever had yeah he coached me all through middle school all through elementary school and like he is like without him I would not be at BU like I would not be playing basketball yeah, I have a, a similar experience. My mom was the head uh, track coach at Dover Sherborne. Okay. So I got coached by her, and there was definitely hard parts of it, like, you know, your mom being around, like, yeah. all the time through high school. But it was also really cool because she knew, like, all my best friends, and I got to spend time with her all throughout high school. So a little bit, like, I can see yeah. how that could be, like, a really good experience, too. Yeah. And then you kind of touched on that coaching is somewhat of an arduous life. You know, there's... You've got to be recruiting and the hours are weird, stuff like that. Is that, is that unappealing at all? Is there a sense of that? Um, I don't think so. I mean, I actually got to have, I had a really cool experience. I helped my old AU coach this past spring mm-hmm. and I actually helped him coach like mm-hmm. hit two of his teams. And like I went and traveled with them like to two tournaments and stuff and like just being in the gym like that and like being back in that AU like vibe was like made me feel more excited to want to be like a college coach eventually like I think it's I think obviously it's I'm it's gonna be hard like adjusting to the the different lifestyle but I would much rather be sitting in a gym for 10 hours in a day than have to go sit at a desk from like 9 to 5 like I'm just not meant to do that have you thought about do you have a preference for coaching men's or women's basketball um I think I would obviously probably like I will I'll start in women's Mm -hmm. and that would be like I've I've thought about that like how I think that there should be women's coach more women's coaches in the men's basketball yeah especially in college yeah Yeah. especially in college like there's there's none like there are no women in in a lot of these schools and I think that that would help out some teams but I don't know like that's it and it's such a different game too though that's like the hard jump is like men's basketball and women's basketball are like two totally different like things yeah so I don't know oh really what do you what do you think the substantive differences are between men's and women's I think um men's is a lot faster like and mm. I hate saying this because I hate being like oh well one's ba-. like I don't think anyone's better than the other I think women's right. basketball is um, look down on a lot because we can't dunk, but like, mm. I think that that's not fair. Like, I think that the women's game is played the way basketball is supposed to be played. It's more. Oh like, yeah, because originally they weren't. Originally they weren't thinking people were gonna be jumping up yeah, and slamming it exactly. in. Exactly, and it's more like fundamental base. Like you're playing like team basketball a lot of the times, and then like men's basketball is a lot of like one on one like skill. Like I'm gonna break you. Like I'm gonna break my defender down and go to the basket. Huh. There's like women's basketball is like that, but like in. And especially in, like, my experience, like, a lot of play, like, we have a lot of plays compared to, like, men's basketball. So, it's just, like, two different styles, like, relying on different skill sets. Yeah, I've never, I've never heard it broken down like that. I feel like that's kind of a fascinating take about that it's more true to the sport. It's, like, a team basketball. Mm -hmm. And that is, like, a big thing that you kind of see in the NBA, right, that kind of holds up your point where... Teams can be like in football or some like something like that. You'll see like, you know, it really teams don't really repeat in football. It's so rare. The last time it happened was two thousand three that they won the championship. But now all the time, like if two or three guys decide to go on one team, mm-hmm. they can just go and they're doing isolation and one on one and just kind of changing the game like that. So you kind of you want something more pure like that. Was that at all? Are you? Would you say you're a team sports person or you're kind of? You sound like almost. And I don't mean this to be an insult, but competitive in an individual oriented way where you're focused on like, I want to be my best, like in track, right? How discus mm-hmm. you were like all about that. Would you say you're more individual or team? I feel like I've evolved. Mm-hmm. I feel like when I was younger, I was more individual. Mm-hmm. But then I think when I got to college, like that's another thing too, is like 
it's bigger than yourself. Like you have to be yeah. team focused. And especially like going from being the leading scorer, like going from averaging what well, I think it was like 20 or something my, high, my senior year of high school wow. to then now like eight. Like that's a big difference. Like yeah. so, and like I was the only one in Medway who like actually like enjoyed basketball. Kind really? Of. From not enjoyed, but like played outside of high school basketball. Yeah. So like it was a lot of focused on like me, 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 and then when I got to college, it was like okay, I'm not this top, sh- this like hot shot anymore. Like I'm, yeah. I'm one of fifteen. Like I have to, I have to do my work mm. for the team, and I think that like. That's something that I'm like now I'm so focused on like the team success that like the numbers don't really like I don't focus on like how I'm averaging or like what I'm doing like that's like I like to tell people like I'm like the hype man of the team like that's my (laughs) role as like I've been in like a leadership position the past two years like I was a cap I've been a captain since my sophomore year no way yeah so like and just like my kind of job through that has been like just hyping everyone up. Like I'm the first person to give like a chest pump or something, like just like little things like that. Yeah. So did you start as a freshman? Um, by the end of my freshman year, yeah. That's crazy. And it's like you were saying the the level change sort of and how did you work your way into that starting position? What was that season like? My freshman year was um interesting because it was a brand like a brand new staff so the whole team was like it was just a new like vibe of the team and like I just got there and like my coach like she came after she got hired like came to my house we had dinner and she was like you're gonna play like I, I need you to be ready to go wow. and I think my freshman year was like I had to I had to work harder than I ever had before like yeah. I, it's a it's totally different like it's way it's much faster pace in college than it is in high school like you're not ready for that like mm-hmm. You're not ready for like the fit, the pure physical like difference. Like I've I had never lifted before until I got to to college. Yeah. And like my freshman summer, like lifting, it was like a whole new. Like I was like, oh my god, like I can be stronger. Like this is so yeah. weird. Like I didn't know like this was a thing. And then like I think I just I worked as hard as I could. I when I went in, I did what I was I did what I was told, and then I like worked hard enough, and then my coach like saw that the lineup when I was in like it flowed and then I don't know mm. she just like one day in the middle of the season like sat me down in her office was like I'm putting you in the starting lineup like I hope you're ready and I was like yeah I've been Jeez. ready, <laughs> I've been ready. Yeah. there I'm you like, go yeah. yeah a big thing that I've seen across like interviewing a bunch of people is that like successful people in an area believe in themselves is that a big thing that you think you have going for you um, or you, I, are you hard on yourself? Maybe you don't. I don't want to lead you. No, yeah. I'm definitely hard on myself, like harder on myself than other people are, I guess. Like it, like that's another thing too. Like after games, like when my dad's there, like I have to be like, he'll have to be like, no, you had a good game. Like relax. Like, cause mm-hmm. I'll be like, oh, like this, this, whatever. But like, I think to some extent though, you have to believe in yourself because especially at the, di- the division one level and even at the college level too, like I, I don't know if it's like this in D2 and D3, but like, you're not going to be babied and like celebrated through everything. Like yeah. I was celebrated all through high school, like not to like this full extent, but like you're <clears throat> celebrated when you're like that person on the team. So going from that to then high, to college and being like, no, like you did what you, you the bare minimum, congratulate, like no one's going to yeah. say congratulations to that. Yeah. So like you kind of have to believe in yourself and it can get hard at times and I think that that's when like relying on your teammates and then like just that's been something that I've had to definitely work on is like, no, I'm here for a reason, I got it. Like that like, yeah. mindset had to change. Yeah, that's a big thing too that people can get is like, oh my God, once you step from high school and you jump in that... Um, college is like do I deserve to be here that was the thing I struggled with my freshman year at Stonehill I was like oh my god like everyone's so talented on this yeah. track team like that kid won a state title in the long jump that kid won a state title in the 400 like oh man I didn't do that do I yeah, yeah. do I deserve to be here and then like one time it was right before the conference championship one of the captains just goes hey like any of you freshmen and I was like it was almost like he had read my mind I yeah. hadn't even said it out loud to anyone any of you freshmen you gotta know, like, you absolutely deserve to be here. The coaches picked you. Like, you're here for a reason. Yeah. And that was, I was like, okay, I gotta be ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say, 
when you were that person, as you put it in high school, you know, scoring like 20 points a game, like how, I'm curious, how did other teams deal with that? Were they trying to double you? Were they changing around their defensive schemes? Because it sounds like maybe the offense at Medway was kind of centered around you. Uh, yeah, I think um, my senior year, I felt it the most. Like there was a couple of schools would play like a box and one. So like, mm-hmm. like a, you know, like that was very focused on me. But a lot of our offense was like, it was so funny because a lot of our, like the offense we ran was like motion. So it was never like a set play for me. So I feel like that was like, it wasn't, it wasn't like hyper aware, but I just, you look like you would know that people knew like where you were, like you people were more aware of like where you were on the floor, like, especially my senior year. Like I remember, I just remember like you would hear people be like, oh, there's like child, where's child, like say stuff like that. And you're (laughs) like. You're like, wait, what? Yeah, like, you're following you're like, me. I'm, I'm not just a number anymore. Like, wait a minute. Yeah, you know my name. Yeah, so like, and I remember my um, my thousand point game was at Millis, and I remember like the coach saying to the boys basketball coach at Medway because they like knew each other that like I wasn't gonna get it in their gym and that they were gonna Ooh. like make sure like whatever. And How that many was did the you need? How many did you need? Fifteen. I oh, okay. just got so like, barely, yeah. and I had a bad game that game too. But like, I remember being so nervous, and then I was like, "What? Like, it doesn't matter. Like, at the end of the day, if I get it now, I'll. If I not, don't get it now, I'll get it the next game. Like, it was just like. How many did you end up over your career? Oh gosh, I think it was like one. Oh, it was like one thousand one hundred thirteen or something. Like, wow. Something like that. Yeah. It's crazy because you really. I was like, I always try to break down the math. I'm like, you gotta basically get like good playing time as a freshman and stuff yeah. like that to be able to hit the average. Like if you start playing your sophomore year on varsity, three years, I don't know how many, how many games do you guys get in the TVO? 20, 15? Oh God, I think 20. I have okay. no idea. That so sounds si- right. 60 games to get a thousand points. Like that's absolutely nuts. What was the moment like when you scored your thousand point? Did people freak out? Yeah, it was cool. Cause I don't know if you've ever been in Melissa's gym, but it's tiny. Like, Oh, I, I have would have been, loved yeah. to have done it in Medway. That would have been cool because then like more people would have been there. Yeah, like, you just Millis start like missing shots on purpose. Yeah. Oh no, I'm not gonna get it today. Yeah, Millis is like down the road too. So, but and True, it's yeah. tiny and um, it was cool because all my friends came. Like my whole friend group, my whole fam, my like extended family was there. So oh the gym god, was what packed. if you? Yeah, 15. What if you hadn't gone? Yeah, so that was like the fear. But like my friends like painted on their stomachs. Like it was anyone. <laughs> It was, um, I think I had, like, it was funny because I had, like, 10 in the first half. Like, and I was like, oh, like, I can, like, breathe a little. Like, and I wasn't, like, super, that was one thing I really tried to to do was not be hyper-focused on that. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be a ball hog. Exactly. And, like, I just wanted to, like, like, I just wanted to win the game. Like, I wasn't too concerned. Like, it was, I was obviously, like, it was in the back of my mind, but I wasn't, like, counting. Mm Mm-hmm. And... But then, like I, rem- it was a, it was on a free throw. It was an and one free throw. My wow. the point, yeah. So like, I got the, like made the layup, got fouled, and then I like go to the free throw line, and I'm like, and everyone's phones are out. I'm like, <laughs> if I don't make this free throw, like, <laughs> that is awful. Like that's embarrassing. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, deep breath, whatever. But it was honestly like just like I felt like this weight was off my shoulders. Oh yeah. Because that was like one of my main goals in high school. Like I set for myself like I wanted to I obviously knew from this from freshman year I wanted to play division one college basketball so that was something I had worked for wow yeah so like signing like committing signing and then um getting my thousand point and like winning the TVL were like my goals like that was pretty much yeah. it yeah did you win the TVL what was the best team finish we won the finish? small we won the small okay my yeah. senior year um which if there wasn't small and big we wouldn't have won because we didn't beat Hopkinton but or Medfield but um well, Hopkinton has like three times too many people yeah, yeah exactly so like those were always like the hardest games we're playing like those teams but um so that was like awesome that we got that but like the moment when I scored it I was just like all right I it's done no one can talk to me about it anymore I did it. I, <laughs> yeah. like, I made it that's all I wanted yeah and then after it was like in the middle of the fourth quarter so then like 
it was nice because like they stopped the game like i got to go hug my parents and my like oh they brother. did okay i was wondering yeah. i was like what if the refs didn't know and they're like why is everyone freaking out no yeah so they like i don't know if they knew before like before something but they like did like my whole team like ran out on the floor like they i wow like they got me a banner that like said congratulations on a thousand like that's whatever. crazy yeah and like i got like i we took up the millis team had flowers for me my team had flowers so we like took a photo I went and hugged my parents, and then I was like, all right, like we got to win the game. Like We were only up like five or something mm-hmm. at that point. So I was like, okay, let's relax. Yeah. And then after the game, like I was like, okay. That's crazy. Were you the first woman at Medway to score 1,000? Okay. No. Because at DS, I think we only have one or two ladies that have scored Oh, okay. I don't know. I think... I think they're... Do you have a banner up? At no, your... we don't have a We banner. have a list. Have you been to DS's gym? Yeah. There's a list of a thousand points. Yeah. I think the, there's like a guy that scored like 1,600. That's crazy. I'm sure other places there's people that have scored more. But... Yeah, but we had... Um, as I'm aware of two other people. So Sarah Hope was... Um, she actually also went to BU. No way. Yeah, okay. played at BU. So like that was kind of cool, like following in her like footsteps almost. But so she scored it and I was in middle school... And then um, Sarah DePillo was a senior when I was a sophomore, and she got wow. It too. So do you remember them and kind of looking up to them at all, or? Yeah, I was. Sarah was one. Of, Sarah DePillo was one of my teammates. So like playing with her was obviously a cool experience, and like seeing how sh- how hard she worked. And then like I I looked up to Sarah Hope ever since I was like younger. And it was funny mm-hmm. because she actually coached me for a year. My sophomore year was an assistant on our team. That's crazy. Yeah. What are you? Would you keep in touch with her now, or? Yeah, like we still talk. I'm supposed to see her later today. She's supposed to come to our team pickup. Tonight. No way. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah, I. That's a weird parallel because I, the exact my mom, as I mentioned, was a track coach at DS. So when I was like sixth grade, I started hanging around the DS track team, and there was this guy named Dan Carroll who threw the discus 160 feet, and he threw in Mississippi State. So he was like my hero growing up. Yeah. And he was like super nice, super funny. Like everyone really liked him, and he was just a good dude. And my senior year. He had already graduated college. He was waitering in uh, Brighton, and he came back and coached me as a senior, and that was crazy. Um, he's actually coming on the podcast now soon, but it's kind of funny how, and that's another level of like, and I wouldn't say I was as good as him in track. I threw like 123 in the disc and like 155 in the javelin, but the point is like, it's weird when you start your heroes, you're kind of in the same, yeah. walking the same path as them roughly. You're like, oh man, am I really like them? Yeah. Am I really doing it like they did? No, yeah, that's exactly how I, I'm like. It's so weird. Like, I remember like committing to BU and I was like, wow. Like, <laughs> I like looked up to Sarah and now we're like, we're going to play, we play for the same team now. Like, yeah. it's just like weird. Like, you mentioned weird coincidence. You mentioned pickup. Is that BU alum and everything? Like, how does that work? So, or is it just random? Like, no, so like for summer session, we'll have like, we'll, be pick, we'll just play pickup as a team twice a week. And, like, the alum don't usually come, but she, like, texted one of us and was like, hey, like, can I come to pick up, like, this weekend or whatever? And wow. Like, yeah, sure. But it's fun just because, like, we'll get in the gym and we'll play for, like, an hour, just, like, get up and down. Have you seen um, the Metro West article about Spencer Merkin from Holliston? Spencer runs Summer Runs. It's, like, this tournament, not tournament, but it's this kid who brings together, like, Metro West kids. Okay. And they just play pickup at Millis High. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so I thought that was pretty, um, a pretty cool article. Um, is there any any advice that you wanted to, actually, no, I think I already asked you that. Um, I was going to say, um, that's probably about, how long have we been talking? Yeah, about about an hour. Uh, any goals for the up, for the upcoming season or two? Um, yeah, I want to win the Patriot League. I want to go to the mm-hmm. NCAA tournament. I think that that's, that's like anyone's dream when you play college basketball. Yes. It's like March Madness, but, um, we made it to the finals last year. We lost in the finals. Brutal. And yeah, it was, it was awful. But, yeah. Like I've been there now. Like we've all been mm-hmm. there. Our whole team has been there now. So we know how, what it feels like and we know what we need to do. And that's like my overall goal. I don't really have any personal goals like for... Like, once I got to college, I was kind of like, I just want to play hard and I want to win. Like, mm. I was like, I don't I don't care about, like, the individual awards and stuff because I feel like that can take away from the team. Yeah. But I just want to win. Well, I think that's a great uh, natural stopping place. Uh, and I will be rooting for you guys. I'm in the Patriot League and uh, go you. to that tournament. I'll be rooting for you guys. So, 
Huge shout out to Riley Childs. Big thanks to her for coming on the show. And thanks to everyone for watching episode 32 of the Young Shakespeare Podcast. Please like and subscribe. It brings a smile to my face. And tune in for the next episode. Thanks for watching.